Did you know that cement, that dull gray yet resilient material, is the very foundation of every highway, every skyscraper, and the dreams we build under the name of urbanization? From billion-dollar boulevards to cloud-piercing towers, its presence weaves silently through the structures that define our modern world. Beneath its dusty surface lies a transformative journey, beginning with anonymous mountain rocks, awakened by explosives, crushed by steel, and then fired in massive rotary kilns. What emerges as a fine powder is not merely a product of technology, it's the result of metamorphosis, of an industrial ritual executed with unwavering precision. In this video, we'll take you deep into that remarkable process, from raw mountain stone to cement powder, from an unassuming material to the backbone of trillion-dollar infrastructure projects around the globe. Few would imagine that what seems like worthless volcanic ash, the remnants of ancient eruptions, would become the foundation for one of the most durable building materials humanity has ever created. Around the year 128 AD, the Romans began using this very mixture to craft a type of concrete that could withstand the test of time for millennia. The evidence still stands today. The massive dome of the Pantheon and the enduring tiers of the Colosseum remain towering symbols in the heart of Rome, defying war, weather, and time. Yet the very material that once upheld empires has now become a silent burden of the modern era. Each year, the cement industry releases more than 4 billion tons of CO2, accounting for roughly 75% of global emissions, surpassing even the combined output of aviation and shipping. What once helped humanity build homes, schools, and cities is now contributing to a warming planet. Behind every bag of cement lies a chain of industrial processes more complex than we might think. And with it, a pressing question. Can we continue to build without breaking the balance of the only home we all share? Earth. The journey begins with limestone, the primary raw material, accounting for 75 to 80 percent of the total mixture, and serving as the main source of calcium oxide, CaO. To minimize transportation costs, limestone quarries are typically located near cement plants. Extraction is carried out using controlled blasting methods, drill holes between 8 and 12 meters deep or ANFO, electric detonators, and specialized stemming materials. Once the charging is complete, Workers sound warning sirens before initiating the blast under strict safety protocols. The detonation breaks the rock along a predetermined pattern, generating thousands of tons of fragmented material. Controlling the blast direction and drill hole density not only improves extraction efficiency, but also minimizes the amount of oversized rock that needs to be reprocessed thereby reducing downtime and optimizing costs across the entire downstream operation. Large capacity crawler excavators move in to load the limestone onto 40 to 60 ton dump trucks or onto the primary conveyor belt, preparing the material for the next stage. Oversized rocks are broken down on site using hydraulic breakers. From there, the material is transported to the primary crushing station, where high-power jaw crushers or hammer mills reduce the rock size to under 100 millimeters, suitable for blending and fine grinding in subsequent steps. Next comes clay, the second key ingredient in the mix, which is extracted from open pit mines using excavators. Though no blasting is required, the process still demands strict control over moisture content and material consistency to ensure stable quality throughout production. After extraction, both limestone and clay are fed into a transport system in preparation for the next stages of processing. In many modern cement plants, limestone is moved via conveyor belts stretching for several kilometers, directly linking the quarry to the raw material intake area inside the plant. This setup has become one of the industry's most iconic features. A fully mechanized, uninterrupted flow of raw materials operating 24-7, crossing hills and production corridors without a single pause. Beyond ensuring continuous production, this system also helps reduce labor costs and minimizes emissions associated with traditional vehicle-based transport. From the transport conveyors, limestone and clay are carried into a dome-shaped blending storage. Inside, stacking and reclaiming machines operate in alternating cycles to form layered piles of material. 
this stratified structure plays a crucial role in homogenizing the chemical composition of the raw mix, effectively eliminating natural variations between different extraction batches. Once homogenized, the raw materials are proportioned according to precise ratios and fed into the raw milling system, one of the most critical stages in the preparation of the feed mix. Depending on the plant's technology, this mixture enters either a two-compartment ball mill or a vertical roller mill. These are large-scale industrial machines operating continuously, with capacities ranging from 100 to 500 tons per hour. Inside, the components are finely ground to an average particle size below 90 microns, producing a uniform powder known as raw meal, an essential precursor to high-quality clinker. Some older plants still use the wet grinding method, where materials are mixed with water to form a slurry. Although this approach allows easier adjustment of composition, it consumes significantly more energy and is increasingly being phased out due to its lower efficiency compared to dry milling. The entire process, from blending to grinding, is fully automated and monitored through a SCADA, Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System. This system continuously tracks key variables, such as material flow, grinding speed, raw meal fineness, and exhaust gas temperature, ensuring consistent quality before the mix enters the kiln. After being finely ground, the raw meal is fed into the preheater tower, a multi-story structure composed of stacked cyclones. In this system, the raw material gradually descends from the top while hot gases from the rotary kiln rise from the base in the opposite direction. This counterflow heat exchange preheats the material to around 850 degrees before it enters the main kiln. At the base of the tower, within the calciner chamber, most of the limestone in the mix is decomposed into calcium oxide and CO2. This significantly shortens the required kiln time and results in substantial fuel savings. Traditionally, the heat for the preheater and calciner has come from coal, one of the major contributors to the cement industry's high carbon emissions. In an effort to reduce CO2 output and move toward more sustainable production, many plants are now shifting to RDF, refuse-derived fuel, made from non-recyclable municipal waste and discarded rubber, particularly used tires. These end-of-life tires, once a serious environmental burden, are collected, sorted, stripped of steel wires, and shredded into dark rubber chips. After composition checks, the chips are fed into combustion chambers at the base of the preheater or through auxiliary inlets along the rotary kiln. Burned at nearly 1000 degrees Celsius, the rubber combusts cleanly, delivering heat energy equivalent to coal but generating significantly lower CO2 emissions. Additionally, some plants are incorporating other alternative fuels such as industrial sludge, textile scraps, and agricultural waste. This solution not only reduces energy costs and extends kiln life, but also signals a new direction for an industry long viewed as difficult to decarbonize. And right at this turning point, a pressing question emerges. Can cement, once synonymous with emissions, become the foundation for a more sustainable future? Leaving the calciner, the raw meal enters the rotary kiln, where internal temperatures can exceed 2,700 degrees, around 1,040 degrees cells. This is the most energy-intensive stage of the entire production line, and the site of crucial mineralogical transformations. Inside the massive, slightly inclined steel tube that rotates slowly, the material undergoes partial melting, and then recrystallizes into clinker nodules the essential compound that gives cement its characteristic strength and binding properties. The kiln's internal conditions are closely monitored using thermal sensors and infrared cameras. These tools allow technicians to precisely control rotation speed, fuel feed rates, and material residence time, ensuring that the chemical reactions occur efficiently, the clinker meets quality standards, and energy consumption is optimized. However, this is also the stage where the majority of CO2 emissions in the entire production process are released. Each ton of limestone decomposed emits a substantial amount of carbon into the atmosphere, a legacy the cement industry continues to grapple with in its pursuit of decarbonization. Fresh out of the rotary kiln, clinker remains incandescent, carrying temperatures well above 1000 degrees Celsius. If not cooled promptly, 
uncontrolled mineral reactions may continue, compromising the structural stability of the material. To prevent this, the clinker is immediately transferred to a great cooler, a continuously moving platform where high-pressure ambient air is forced upward from below. Under this stream of force convection, the clinker cools rapidly to below 100 degrees Celsius. This controlled, continuous cooling process not only locks in the desired mineral structure, but also allows for efficient heat recovery. The extracted thermal energy is reused in other stages of production, significantly improving the energy efficiency of the entire system. Once cooled, the clinker moves on to the grinding stage, where it is blended with gypsum and, depending on the type of cement being produced, supplementary materials such as ground granulated blast furnace slag or fly ash. This mixture is fed into high-capacity ball mills or vertical roller mills. Inside, the clinker is continuously crushed and ground by steel balls or high-pressure rollers, producing a fine powder with a typical fineness of around 4,500 semidif per grog, depending on the technical specifications of the final product. The quality of the finished cement is tightly controlled using automated weighing and analysis systems. Every key parameter, from fineness and mineral composition to compressive strength, is monitored in real time to ensure that each batch leaving the mill meets consistent and reliable standards before it is bagged for distribution. After exiting the grinding mill, the finished cement is conveyed through high-pressure pneumatic pipelines to intermediate storage silos where the material is temporarily held before being bagged or dispatched in bulk. At this stage, an automated sampling system periodically extracts representative samples and sends them to the laboratory for analysis of key parameters such as fineness, moisture content, mineral composition, and strength development at various time intervals. All collected data is cross-checked against internal quality control standards as well as national technical regulations, enabling early detection of any deviations in the production process. This ensures consistent quality across batches so that every bag of cement delivered to end users meets the same reliable, high-performance standard. Once the cement meets quality standards, it is directed to the packing area, where automated machinery takes over the final stage of product formation. Workers stand at the bagging system, placing empty bags onto filling spouts one by one. With a single precise motion, cement flows steadily into each bag, delivering exactly 50 kilograms per cycle, thanks to integrated automatic weighing systems. In modern plants, the entire bag placement and filling process is fully robotic, capable of handling hundreds of bags per hour, with consistent speed and near zero error margins. Filled bags are then released onto sealing conveyors, either stitched or heat sealed, depending on market requirements. Along the line, smart sensors constantly monitor weight, bag integrity, and seal quality. At the slightest deviation, the system instantly removes defective bags from the line, ensuring only flawless products proceed to the next stage. The process concludes with an automated palletizing system. Robotic arms move in synchronized motions, stacking each bag onto pallets with precision, akin to laying bricks. Once 40 bags are stacked, the pallet is shrink-wrapped to protect against moisture and dust. Ready to leave the plant and begin a new journey to construction sites, cities, and the foundations being built every single day. After being shrink-wrapped, cement pallets are carefully loaded onto freight trucks using forklifts. The stacking process is carried out with precision to maximize cargo space and ensure safety throughout transport. All relevant data, including quantity, weight, batch number, and dispatch time is automatically recorded by the system, enabling fast and accurate traceability whenever required. In parallel, bulk cement is loaded directly into specialized tanker trucks via sealed pneumatic systems operating under high pressure. This method not only speeds up the loading process, but also completely prevents the release of fine dust into the environment helping maintain cleanliness at the dispatch area and ensuring compliance with industrial emission standards. From here, the cement is transported to concrete batching plants, where it meets its familiar companions, sand, gravel, and water. Under the control of automated dosing and mixing systems, the ingredients are combined with precision, down to the exact percentage. Within minutes, the seemingly simple gray slurry transforms into concrete, 
the foundational material behind every modern structure. From coarse blocks of limestone to ultra-fine powder, bearing the weight of entire structures, every bag of cement is the result of technology, precision, and meticulous labor. It's a process that may seem familiar, yet behind it lies a vast, interconnected system, where even the slightest vibration of a roller or a subtle temperature shift can impact the quality of buildings meant to last for centuries. Thank you for joining us on this journey to rediscover a material we often take for granted. Cement doesn't just support homes, bridges, and roads. It reveals how human knowledge and engineering can transform the most basic elements into the foundation of our modern world. If this video gave you a deeper appreciation for the silent substance beneath your feet, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, because behind every familiar material lies an extraordinary story where technology, humanity, and nature intersect in ways you may have never imagined.